the NHS crisis in this country has escalated so much up to a point where Ukrainian political refugees are willing to take a risk to go back to their home country to get basic health treatment. Now, if you thought the NHS England overall has been chaotic, the devolved administrations like Wales and Scotland, that's a whole new level of chaos. We already know about the level of quality of uh, Mark Drakeford's Welsh Labour NHS. But let's talk about Scotland. It's quite interesting because this was mentioned in the Scottish Parliament where Ukrainian decided to travel back to Ukraine to get basic health treatment after realizing that the NHS waiting time in Scotland is so long that he's actually willing and they're willing to actually go all the way back to Ukraine, <laughs> take that risk to see their doctor. This is the video. The wait was so long that it actually made more sense for her to risk traveling back to a war zone to see her doctor in Kiev. And so she did. Presiding officer, the air raid sirens, the drone strikes and cruise missile attacks of the Ukrainian capital were less daunting to Maria than the wait for treatment in Scotland's NHS. That is appalling. These are the risks that people are taking for the sake of their own health and all for the want of basic access to primary care. So can I ask the First Minister, is she embarrassed by this? First Minister. Um, I, I don't know. Before we hear Nicola Sturgeon's answer, because we're going to go back to the video, let's not forget that also mass migration, legal and illegal, has also had a massive, massive effect on public services like the NHS. So the whole policy on the whole Ukraine conflict is a bit all over the place. You know, we're sending all the money, all the weapons, all the food. And then obviously we're also very generous, welcoming to the Ukrainian refugees. But then the system is so corrupt now that partly because of mass migration and partly because of the NHS structure being so big and partly because devolved administrations are incompetent, it's actually backfiring on the migrants and refugees themselves. Circumstances beyond what uh, Alex Cole Hamilton has narrated of that case, and it would be wrong for me to comment on an individual uh, case. What I do know is that we again continue to support uh, general practice. There are more uh, GPs uh, per head of population in Scotland than anywhere else in the UK. 83 GPs per 100,000 population here, uh, compared to 63 in England, uh, 63 in Wales, 75 in Northern Ireland. Uh, we, of course, have a target that we uh, are right now working uh, towards delivery of increased numbers of GPs. We've recruited, I think, more than 3,000 members of the wider multidisciplinary teams in general practice and primary care. Uh, access to GPs, like access to other parts of the health service right now, are challenging and very challenging for some patients, and we continue to work to address that. Oh, well, well, well. you know what's funny? That was her defence line. That was her justification. But it slightly backfired because her defence line to, ex to defend what was actually happening, you know, someone like Maria from Ukraine uh, waiting so long to get a GP appointment so that she had to go back to Ukraine. Um, Nicola Surgeon's defence line was, well, we have more GPs in Scotland, 83 per 100,000. Um, you do realise that's not a good defence line. So that means despite the fact that you have more doctors than England in terms of per 100,000, then the system is still not working. So the system is not working. It's your model, it's your management, and the, the people at the top of their health as, as civil service. So you can't blame it on the doctors then, right? <laughs> it's chaotic that she thought that would be a good defense line. It completely exposed her idiotic Scottish NHS. That's the reality. Um, but <laughs> you're not going to get any of this in the mainstream media. The best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.